Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sajjad Mazdani from University of Washington, and I will present in the next generation co-package optics and some of the challenges. So today, there are two major technological trends that are reshaping the future of our data centers and supercomputing uh, super, super technology. Sorry. Uh, one major one is the co-package optics. Co-package optics has been emerged as uh, to answer the needs for scaling up the data centers and also the rise of uh, data intensive AI and ML applications. Now today we see some sorts of co-package optics basically embedded in today's network switches by Broadcom and some other companies. Now on the on the AI and ML side, you can see that there is obviously the need to answer the drastic demand, the drastic increasing demand of the off-package uh, interconnect bandwidth from the, C, uh, from the GPUs, right? So for example, the latest uh, NVIDIA GPU H100 is, uh, is demanding about 7.2 terabit per second bidirectional bandwidth. And soon this will go up to 10 terabit per second. And of course, the only solution that can provide such high bandwidth is going to be optical interconnects once you can co-package them with GPUs and switches. I also want to mention that when uh, co-packaging optics is not only going to help us to achieve the bandwidth, the, the unprecedented bandwidth that we for AI and ML, um, but also it enables scaling out once you want to have thousands of these GPUs interconnected together using a variety of different uh, optical networking technologies. Now the other major technological trend that we see today is disaggregated systems or compute systems. So disaggregation has been traditionally merged uh, in order to balance the uh, the workload across different applications for data centers uh, by basically dynamically changing the resource allocations. Now it turned out that uh, disaggregated architectures also can be very beneficial for the AI and ML workloads, especially for the type of distributed, vastly distributed uh, training sessions. And a variety of different technologies emerged to enable disaggregation, including SmartNICs, some of the memory, new memory uh, controllers like CXL and also Copacage Optics, it turned out that it is a key enabler to provide high bandwidth and versatile flexible networking that we want to have to interconnect the pools of memory and compute together to enable this aggregation. So now, what is the state of the art of Copacage Optics? So recently we saw few prototypes from uh, basically the partnerships uh, between the startups and the big companies. They, they, uh, uh, they mostly achieved about around terabit per second uh, aggregate data rate per fiber, which is amazing. This data rate has been achieved either by going very fast per wavelength, let's say around up to 100, or at moderate data rates like 20 gigabit per second using multiple wavelengths of light. Uh, this approach is called WDM, DWDM, that you already heard about that in the previous presentations. So energy-wise, uh, I want you to notice that it's always around 5 to 10 picojoule per bit. Now, on the laser side, there are there basically still a debate that whether the laser should be, should be also in the package or it can be an external laser source. And also in terms of the edge bandwidth densities, they're all around or below half a terabit per second per millimeter. Now, what do you ideally want from uh, co-package optics for the next generations of disaggregated AI systems, uh, the target should be ideally basically uh, one picojoule per bit in terms of the energy efficiency and plus two terabit per second per millimeter for the edge bandwidth density. Um, and as you can notice, comparing these numbers from the, with, with, with what we, uh, we had in the, in the previous slide, uh, in terms of the energy efficiency, we are about five to 10x uh, below what we, what we need for the next generation. Um, and this is mainly due to the, a couple of reasons, two of them I want to point out here. One is the electronic photonic integration 
is becoming the challenge in terms of the achieving the energy efficiency as the speed that you want it. You can either go with monolithic today, but your CMOS can be as fast as four or five, as advanced as four or five nanometer, or you can go with 3D or two and a half D, uh, pick a very advanced CMOS, but now you have to pay for the price of the parasitics that can be as three or four times even larger than the device itself. Also, I want you to uh, to notice that when you look at the energy breakdown for the transmitter and receiver, about half of the energy or even more than that is just burned by the clocking and the DAX that you need for high speed data, uh, data rates, basically. Uh, also, fiber packaging and the laser sources is a, is a big challenge for next generations, as you heard in some of the previous talks, but uh, I'm not going to talk about them here. So, what are the solutions? Uh, these are two solutions that my lab is working on currently. One is that we need to provide more advanced packaging where we can have densest bomb pitches uh, with lower, low parasitics. Basically, we need to go beyond the most advanced microbomb technology. One promising solution can be direct bonding into the substrates, like what, for example, the UCLA has been recently uh, demonstrated, uh, but for only CMOS, uh, pure CMOS applications we can leverage uh, basically direct bonding technologies like this for the silicon photonics and the co-package optics. Uh, the other approach can be electronic photonic co-design. Basically, can, uh, trying to see can we move some of the functionalities around between the domain of electrical or optical domain in order to achieve better efficiencies. Here is one example. You can see for high-speed links for equalization also, or you want to go multi-level, you want highest speed electrical DAX and they burn picojoules per watt. If you can shift that around, into, uh, basically move that into the optical domain and uh, simplify your electronics, you can save a lot on that. Uh, now lastly, I want to point out that once we introduce the co-package optics into the data center architectures, we can come up with new, basically new opportunities to, to exploit this new element uh, in the system, both at the network level and at the package level. At the network level, it's been uh, a subject of research for many years. You can combine that with the optical switching networks, for instance. At the package level, we can think that what other functionalities can be added into the, this third element that will be introduced into the package beyond the, the processor and the memory. For example, if you add some sort of memory controller and give direct access to the HPM to this um, uh, CPO chip, let's say, uh, or block, you can maybe provide lower latency direct memory connection between, between different, let's say, units uh, of compute or nodes of compute and enable uh, disaggregation down to the package level. So in conclusion, um, I want to point out that co-package optics can provide uh, and is kind of the only promising solution to provide the needs of next generation GPU and accelerator of package bandwidths. Next generations of CPU should target energy efficiencies of around or better than picojoule per bit. It, uh, it's very challenging. Two possible solutions would be using a more advanced electronic photon integration and uh, also co designing the electronic with photonics. And lastly, I want to point out that once you add the CPUs into the data centers, we can think about uh, what new architectures can be enabled uh, by adding the CPUs into a data center or supercomputer. And that's it. Thank you.